Hey, I'm Matt. Today, I want to talk to you about five mistakes you got to avoid when you build your workbench. Well, at least five. I may throw a bonus or two in there. And if you stick around, I'll give you a price breakdown on how much I spent on this massive workbench. One of the best things I've done starting out as a woodworker was to build a workbench, a proper flat surface to start building things on. That made a huge difference in my woodworking journey, especially early on. Even if it's a smaller workbench, which we'll get into later, it was great to have that space. It really changed the way I did my woodworking because it gave me a flat level surface to be able to work off of and to reference on. And that's the number one mistake you need to avoid is to make sure that the surface is not only flat, but level. Let me tell you what I mean. My garage floor slopes at least an inch all the way to the back. That wouldn't necessarily matter if all four feet were the same distance off of the floor. But you see here why I put riser feet on my workbench is because if I just put rollers on there, then the actual workbench would be twisted like this because of the way my garage floor is sloped. My garage floor actually slopes toward the house why somebody built it that way, I don't know. But it slopes toward the house, but it also slopes toward the back left corner. So it's it's a basically a two slope. And so you could tell that the, that the far left corner on the workbench is much higher off the floor than the far right corner. That makes a big difference. If I had just put the thing on the floor, it would be twisted. And that's gonna matter on drawers, opening and closing properly. It's also gonna matter on the top which is what matters the most, is when you start assembling things, if it's not flat, you got problems. What you'll wind up with is you'll assemble a piece of furniture upside down usually is how a lot of people assemble it. When you flip it over onto its legs, it's gonna be wobbly and you're not gonna know why. Now, if your garage floor is perfectly flat, then you can get away with just having all four feet on the floor or even on casters so you can roll it around which my previous workbench did have it on casters and I could move it around. So much more room for activities. This video is brought to you by 731woodworks.com. Go check out our online store. We have easy to follow build plans to help you create awesome projects. We also have physical products as well as some merchandise for you to check out there. Anything you purchase from that store directly supports us and we appreciate it. Number two, height. I get a lot of questions on how tall should your workbench be? That's quite personal uh, because of people's different heights and things and where you're comfortable working at. What you really need to consider is if it's an outfeed table for your table saw, you need to have it either slightly lower or at the same level. If you don't take that into consideration and you build your workbench that's taller than your table saw, then you can't use it as an outfeed table because when you start pushing things off of the saw, it's gonna hit the table. I personally prefer that my table saw is slightly higher than my workbench. What that allows for is when I cut multiple pieces of plywood, like you see here, I'm able to cut one piece, it falls onto the table, then I can cut another piece and it actually is level with the saw at that point. The perfect height of a workbench doesn't exist. It just doesn't. So you gotta figure out what's comfortable for you to work at because some items or some projects you're gonna be working on, you would like to have them raised a little bit some projects you would like to have them lower, especially if you've got a tall project you're working on up, up high. The average workbench height is from 34 to 36 inches. Most counter heights in your house is about 36 inches. You can walk up to your counter now if you don't have a, a workbench you've already built, you can go in there and figure out if that's how tall you want it. It's gonna be yay high, I'm five foot 11. This workbench is just shy of 34 inches. It's probably about 33 inches uh, right now. Number three, mistake you need to avoid is building the workbench too small. When I built my very first workbench, I actually built it too small. It was about three foot by four foot with just a sheet of OSB. I went cheap on the materials and was able to make that workbench work for me for a little while, but the actual top was too small to build many projects on. I actually wound up expanding it out to three foot by five foot. That worked well for quite a while. However, this is a four foot by eight foot workbench and I had some people tell me that it was gonna be too big. I wouldn't trade this for, for a smaller bench. This is the perfect size. Now, sometimes it does get cluttered because you're bad about leaving stuff laying there because it's not in your way now. It'll get cluttered at times. However, being able to spread out projects on this workbench, big projects, I really enjoy that. So that's one of the things I would caution you on is, it depends on your space, obviously. So if you're, if you're working in a smaller space, then your workbench will be smaller. 
If you have room for a bigger workbench, go big or go home. So the number four mistake I made when building this workbench was I wildly underestimated how much it was gonna cost to build it. Hey, if you like this video, click that thumbs up for me. It helps me a lot. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon next to it so you get notified of all the new content we've got coming. So for plywood, it actually cost $629.91. As far as the Ambrosian walnut that was donated by Working the Grain Hardwoods out of Bentonville, Arkansas. Thank you, Mark. If I had to purchase that, I had 35 board feet of walnut at $8.25 a board foot. That would have come out to $288.75. On the Ambrosian maple, I used 10 board feet. That's $18 a board foot which comes out to $180. On the drawer slides, I actually had some left over, so I used them on my router table build. However, to get all the drawer slides I needed in one order, I had to buy some extra because they come in packs of 10. So I actually spent $260 on drawer slides. For the drawer pulls, they were like 30 bucks. One of the major expenses was the T-Track and the T-Track hardware. I actually spent $345.85 just on T-Track. That stuff's very expensive. As far as the T-Track accessories go, I bought some from Rockler and I bought some from Armor Tool. I got everything I could think of that I would need for this workbench and that actually come out to about what the T-Track cost, which was $345.32. I spent $50 on leveling feet because I needed six and they come in packs of four, so I had to buy two packs at $25 each. The YouTube play button that I put in the center, of course, a lot of people's not gonna use something like that or put that in their workbench, so you wouldn't have that expense, but that cost me $150 because they give you one and then you can buy extras after that and they are $150 each. The epoxy I actually sealed the play button in with was would have been $61.99, but thank you to Total Boat for donating that for the video. So the total cost of everything, the value of the workbench is $2,341.82. That is a massive amount of money for a workbench. Minus the gifts, which totaled up to $530.74, which was the Ambrosia, the Walnut, and the Epoxy. We're looking at $1,811.08. That's how much out of pocket I've got in this workbench. Couple of reasons why I did it. One, I wanted to make an awesome video and that was just, it was a vision I had and just, I wanted to try to make it come true. I also wanted a nice workbench to be the centerpiece of the shop for the channel so that it can be shown over multiple months or hopefully years to come. So my, myself and Ms. 731 decided to go all in on this project. It was the first and so far the only project we have went all in like that on and just basically said, we're gonna put whatever we can into this to make it the most awesome project I can do. I know that it's shop furniture and it's gonna get beat up and banged on, but at the same time, I just really, really like it. Number five mistake to avoid on your workbench is stick around for bonus content after number five. The number five is finish. What finish you're gonna put on it. So I actually use Watco Danish Oil. If you've watched the workbench build, I'll drop a link in the description below to that build. I use this Watco Danish Oil to put on the whole thing except for the top. I really regret doing that. The reason I regret, it's a good finish. I've used it on other things before. The reason I regret using it on the workbench is it left a sticky film on there that just wouldn't dry. But as you can see, it's been a couple of months since I've had this. Sawdust sticks to it like crazy. It's dry, but it just makes it, stuff just sticks to it more than say Odie's oil. I use Odie's oil on the top and the trim and the sawdust doesn't stick to it like it does the Danish oil finish. Just be cautious of what finish you use. A lot of people just use clear polyurethane, a water-based polyurethane that'll work just perfectly fine. Some people don't put any finish on there. And then I really like Odie's oil. It lasts a very long time. A little bit goes a very long way. I use it on all kinds of stuff too. It's food safe, so you can use it on cutting boards, things like that. And I also use it on all my trays, mallets. It's just a good finish. I'll give you a couple of bonuses to avoid on your workbench. Number one is storage. What do you want to do with about storage on the workbench? My first workbench was just an open shelf on the bottom and I just threw some old toolboxes under there. Meh, you know, if it's an open shelf, it's gonna collect crap. On this workbench, I put two shelves in the back uh, for storing jigs. That's the main purpose. I actually made them 36 inches wide so that it would accept my crosscut sled. And while it works perfect for that, it's got a great place for my crosscut sled to go. I can also store my jointing jig and other things under here. Even the temp, even the mini workbench I can store under here. However, and that's a big however, if you have, you know what happens with shelves, right? 
they get packed full of whatever you can stick under there. So I would probably caution you into building more drawers versus shelves. While drawers can still be junk drawers, collect a lot of crap, I seem to be able to keep more things organized in a drawer versus on a shelf. And if you just pack everything into a drawer and shut it, then it's just there. If you pack everything onto a shelf, it seems to just fall out in the floor at times. Bonus number two to avoid on a workbench is make sure your joints are square when you glue it up or when you screw it together, however you're joining your workbench together. This is pretty minor. However, if you can look right there, I didn't get the clamp squeezed tight and you can see that the joint isn't actually touching at the top, but it is at the bottom. And that was a very long stretch that I was trying to clamp together. And that was one of the issues that I had was I didn't have clamps long enough. I tried to hook two together. And so you'll notice it's a little off going down. It's very minor. It doesn't hurt the function of the workbench. It, it All the drawers open properly. Everything moves properly. It's just a little out of square. I saw it when it was coming together that it wasn't perfectly square, but it was just so minor that I was like, it's not gonna hurt anything. The only real issue it causes other than aesthetics is that I had to trim one of the drawer faces down a little bit so that everything fit properly. It's just one of those things where if it was too bad out of square, it would start affecting the way the drawers fit in the hole because if you're out of square this way, then it's gonna be more narrow at the bottom than it is at the top and it's gonna affect how the drawers operate and all that. Thankfully, it wasn't too much, but just be careful with the squareness of your workbench. If you like this video, check out the workbench build right there. You can click that box, get you that big old virtual fist bump. Also, if you want a mini tabletop workbench, check that one out. That's another cool video.